welcome. My name is Connie Aiello. I'm from Nordlyset Lodge, District 5 in Racine, Wisconsin. Today we'll be learning how to make lofskos. Lofskos is a popular Norwegian stew. It is often made either with pork or beef, potatoes, and root vegetables. A little bit about its origins and backgrounds. Some say it was Eastern European, maybe Germany or even Lithuania. Uh, where its origins are. Some say it's very much like a stew in Liverpool, England called lofskus in uh, stuff, although that's a little bit different. Uh, however, from my research, it looks like that maybe it has a beginning, it's beginning in Denmark, uh, where uh, Danish people have lofskus, and uh, we also have it in Finland, and we also see it in Sweden. So it's a very, very much a Scandinavian dish. Uh, so uh, as I talked before, it's either made with pork or beef. Today we'll be making it with pork. So let's get ourselves started. And I'm gonna switch my camera and we'll talk a little bit about the root vegetables and things that we normally see in this particular dish. Alrighty, so I have my cutting board here and my prep board with things that we normally would need. For this particular recipe, we need four to five pounds of small yellow potatoes. Try to keep them small, more salad side. Don't get a large baked type of potato. Uh, might be starchy. So we want to have something that is hearty, dense, and buttery in flavor and something that will withstand being boiled. Uh, some potatoes fall apart and while they're boiled. So just be very careful, make sure that you're using a boiling potato. We'll also be using one leek, three carrots, medium sized, one rutabaga, or sometimes referred to as feed. Uh, rutabagas, uh, kind of a thing to remember about them. Don't make them more than, a, than a, between a baseball and a softball size. If they get way big, like a softball size, they'll become too woody and hard to cut and, and chop up. Um, we're also going to be using a parsnip as well. Some people like going, I don't like parsnips. I don't like rutabaga. I guarantee in this particular dish, people will think these two things are some type of potato or sweet potato. Um, we're also going to be using some broth. You can use bone broth or regular beef stock broth. If you want to, you can also use it in a package. Uh, we will also be using a kitchen bouquet. Um, this is a browning seasoning. I really like it. Uh, and so hopefully you can do it. This one usually can be found over where the A1 sauce is, where the Heinz 57 uh, soy sauce and that type of thing in the grocery store. So look in that aisle by the ketchup and mustard and other condiments. You will find kitchen bouquet there, barbecue sauce area. Uh, so hopefully we can find that. So these are the vegetables that we are that we will be using today. So I'm going to set aside a couple things, and I want to talk a little bit about a couple of the vegetables. Obviously, carrots and parsnips are kind of similar, um, easy to peel and cut into bite-sized pieces. Potatoes as well, half them, quarter them. If it's a little bit larger potato, take it and put them into six. So we all kind of know that. Uh, chopping process. However, I want to talk a little bit about, let me get this out of the way here. I really want to talk about the leek and about a rutabaga or speed. So let's start with the leek first. Leek is an onion and it's a very mild onion, um, even milder than a uh, shallot and it will hold up well in a stew. So the first thing we want to do is cut off its root hairy end. So go ahead and we'll whack that off and toss that away. If it has tall greens on the end of it, sometimes they're longer. This one, my grocery store cut it shorter. I'm going to go ahead and actually cut some more and bring it down so there's really not much green. You can use this green, but you don't have to. So it's kind of like green onions as well, uh, but it'll have a sweeter, milder taste. But one thing we do want to watch and want to do when we're cutting up leeks is we want to go ahead and take and cut it directly in half. So I'm taking my chef's knife and cutting it directly in half and opening up the leek. The leek tends to have inside of it 
a lot of dirt. Let's see if I can show you some. You'll see some dirt in the leaf itself. So what I recommend is cutting it in half, taking it over to your sink, kind of rinsing it out, fanning it with your fingers, rinse it out, and then we'll come back chopping. So I'm gonna walk away for a second and rinse mine off. So I've gone ahead and fanned and rinsed my leek off. And the leeks then we're going to have two half moon shapes. And we'll go ahead and what we'll just need to do is I'm gonna take one at a time and I'm gonna take my knife and we're gonna start rocking forward and back, cutting it into half moon shapes. So we'll kind of get this like this. We'll use the whole part of the leek. I've already prepped and cut some of the vegetables up. So I'm gonna add this little bit to our leeks and then I'll set it aside here. So I've got leeks in here and then I've got parsnip, uh, parsnips on the other side. I've cut them up ahead of time. You can do that as well. And let's set aside here the leeks. The next thing I wanna talk about is the rutabaga. Uh, rutabaga is a root vegetable or sometimes referred to as swede. Its taste is between cabbage and a turtle, but it's sweeter. So we wanna keep it to this size, which I would consider maybe a little bit larger than a baseball, smaller than, you know, like a smaller softball size. If you get the giant softball size or larger, it's too large, it's gonna taste woody and it's gonna be very hard to, to uh, chop in, into bite-sized pieces. Um, usually grocery store, if you get it from the farmer, make sure you cut off the root so you have a flat end. And then what you wanna do is just take your knife and you wanna go around the edge, kind of like you would do for a pineapple and taking things off. So let me go here and I'm just gonna kind of go around. It's like doing melons and things. If you find it's too hard to chop, and get the skin off, one thing you could do is put your rutabaga on a microwave safe plate or a paper towel or a paper plate would be the best. Put it in the microwave on half power for about three to four minutes. What it do, does is it reduce, reduces the waxy skin that's on the outside and that's easier to peel with a potato peeler if you don't like cutting the rutabaga off the skin of the rutabaga off with a knife. So I'm just kind of going around getting the pieces off of this rutabaga. And uh, it's just like there. So we kind of go make sure that whatever you use that you're using a flat side on the bottom of your board that gives you more stability. You don't lose your knife edge and cut your fingers. Remember, we always use a claw shape and we're drawing the knife in front of the knuckles. It's better to have it hit the side of the knuckles with the side of the blade than to have it coming right on top of your fingers. So let's take a look. I'm almost done here. And I'm just gonna kind of peel it. It's kind of like that trying to cut pineapple or melon when you wanna get the skin off of it. It looks pretty good here. I'm gonna get rid of my garbage here. And uh, we'll, we'll cut this one up a little bit and then we'll set it aside. So, alrighty. So I'm gonna go, remember, I'm looking for my flat side when I'm gonna cut this in half. And then I'm just gonna take and just kind of wiggle my knife back and forth and it should cut easily. I would normally just take and cut it into slices. Sometimes I take the end slices and leave them to the side. And when I get to the middle, this is quite, if I just take and do bite-sized pieces, it's quite large. I sometimes will cut that in half and make it into cubes. So we wanna have some cubes, don't get them too small uh, because this particular dish is boiled and you don't want to have your vegetables disappearing while it's cooking. So let's set this aside and we'll move on to the pork but itself. So remember I said today that we will be making pork lofska. 
And so we're gonna start off with a three to four pound pork butt bone in. You want the bone in for that wonderful flavor, that bone marrow and that wonderful taste that comes along with it. So I have my cutting board that I use specifically for meat. Always a good idea. Um, mine has, if you noticed, I had green, a green board earlier. The green board was telling me that's a vegetable, uh, a board that I use to cut vegetables only. This is a red board. The red board tells me that I'm only to cut meat on it. So I don't have any transfers, transference of any type of bacteria, especially with meat products. So I purchased a bone-in pork butt. This is roughly about three and a half pounds. And you can go up to four, possibly five. Don't go more than five. It won't fit into your Dutch oven. Um, but I would stick around three to five um, is a good choice. If you notice that the pork butt has a fat cap on it, we'll kind of hear, so we've got here, we're gonna take off some of this fat cap what it does is that it prevents the stew from getting too greasy. I'm using a fillet knife. If you don't have a fillet knife, a paring knife will work just fine or go ahead and use your chef's knife as well. But a boning or fillet knife will help you get right under the skin. And I'm taking a good section off of this fat cap. So we just kind of go around and work with it. And we're kind of going here. As I said, that uh, you know, it, this particular stew has origins, maybe Eastern European. It's definitely found in Scandinavia uh, and stuff. But it also was found as skipper's lofskos, and that's a sea captain stew that was served to sailors, and it spread from port to port, from Hamburg to Liverpool and elsewhere. So, I think that's where we're finding it in a variety of different places uh, around Europe. Uh, and abroad as well. And things, let me get this more here. So uh, today, you know, as I said, we're making a pork lofska. And uh, there's three different types of lofskas that you can make. Mine is a brun lofskas or brown. Brun means brown, lofskas. And it's beef or pork with beef broth and gravy. And it's a stew that you would eat with a fork. Um, you can use a pork butt with bone in. You could use a chuck roast if you're using beef or brief biscuit or flank steak would even work. Whatever you have on hand would work for this. If you're doing beef, you want to go ahead and do it like a chuck roast where you would take in brown off the beef first in your skillet, cut it up, and then add it all together and make your stew. So very much like a, a traditional American pot roast uh, and things. There's a lease lobscuff, lease meaning light. And that's usually with a salted pork knuckle, ham or chicken. And then you make a creamy sauce, a bachamel sauce, which is a creamy sauce and you add it in. So that's another one. So if your family is different, or you were raised with something else, or would like to try, there's leaf stuff, leaf lofska, brun lofska, and then there's soup lofska. And soup lofska is thinner and more like a soup than stew, and it's made with stock. So either beef stock or chicken stock, depending on what you're using. If you're using pork, go ahead and use beef stock. Very rarely do you find in the store pork uh, stock. So let's see here. I'm just about done with this. I've got most of this trimmed down. We don't need to trim everything, but a great portion of it. We just don't want to have to skim off fat at the end because uh, what we're going to be doing next is actually salt and peppering this and we're going to be boiling this pork roast for an hour. And that will bring out the flavor from the bone marrow and from the bone itself and things. So um, what we want to do next is we want to go ahead and salt and pepper this liberally like we would do any meat to give it that tenderizing and moisture. I'm going to step away and wash my hands here for a moment. Uh, 
All right, so I'm back and I've washed my hands off here so I can do one hand with raw meat and I can hold my salt and pepper shakers in the other without having to contaminate them. So go ahead and liberally salt and pepper on all sides. I usually do the three sides, use one hand for salt and pepper, the other hand to turn the meat around, make sure you do liberal salt here. And things, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to flip this over, get some salt on the other side. I'm using sea salt or a table sea salt. You can use kosher salt or you can re use regular iodized salt, whatever you normally use for table salt. Um, it is fine for using on this roast. All right, that looks good there. So I'm gonna shift this board to the side and I have a Dutch oven here. My Dutch oven is uh, about four and a half quarts. I'm gonna go ahead and put the little fat side of my roast down into the stock pot. And let's stuff this away. And move this out of the way. So I've got it in here. And what we want to do is we want to cover the roast completely with water. So I've got about, whoops, excuse me. Whew. It's been that time of year where allergies come in and my sneezing starts to begin. So I've got about six cups of water here, some cold water from the tap, and I'm gonna put it to cover the top of my roast. That seems to cover it just about. So I've got it in here. I'm going to put the lid on it and go ahead and put this on the stove, boiling, so high heat for one hour. So I'm going on my stove, high heat for one hour. Now the next thing we're going to do, and for saving time, since it takes an hour for us to boil that pork, and everything. I've gone ahead and boiled the pork, uh, pork butt earlier so we can kind of see the portion from where it goes next. And so I have a pork roast, pork butt roast in another stock pot. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go back, grab my meat board, wipe it off real quick because uh, I had raw meat. We don't want to contaminate raw meat with cooked meat. There we go, all set and done, all clean. I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit so that pork roast, pork butt doesn't fly, pork butt. Alrighty, and I've got my grippy here to help us out. So I cooked it for the hour, and as you can see, the water reduced in the pan. So we're gonna take and use some of this water that we boiled the pork in when we put it back in. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pork roast from the stock pan. Let's set it on the side here. And I'll put this back on the stove for a moment. And so our pork roast is cooked. And if I told you it's the bone in, that bone is, gave us that nice little additional flavor. We have some of the fat here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to go ahead and trim some of that more fat away. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, uh, I don't particularly like to eat grizzle in a stew. And I usually cut it off if I'm having like a New York strip steak or a pine rib roast and things. So let's go ahead and cut some of that major piece off and get rid of that. And then I'm gonna, I'm using my boning knife again. My boning knife is going to help me or a fillet knife. And it's gonna help me to get around that bone. So I'm gonna kind of feel where that bone is and run my knife tip along the edge of it and then cutting away. So this is a lot like how we do when we cut away a, a turkey breast meat from the breast bone 
or from chicken, you can do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down. And let's see here, if you noticed, it's still pink inside. We're still gonna cook this. So, but we wanted to get a get it, we get a head start over the vegetables because the vegetables will cook quicker than the pork itself, the whole roast. And let's see here. And things. So I hope everybody's having a good time and uh, getting ready and set. I'm getting ready for the holidays. It's that time of year. And we're moving things along. I'll be starting my holiday baking. I started doing these Zoom cooking classes when we went into COVID lockdown. I was approached by the District 5 board and cultural director if I would be interested in teaching Zoom cooking classes. And I have done that now for the last three years and I probably will continue to do this. Uh, Sons of Norway asked me if I would come and uh, do some demonstrations for recipes that are in the recipe box on sonsofnorway.com. I have another recipe that's a dessert that was published earlier this year and you can view that for Kifjord Kakr, which is a decadent torque dessert, sometimes referred to as Burden's Besta. Uh, and oh man, that one's a good one. I have a lot of people who love that particular dish. So I'm just cutting away this pork using the boning knife to get it off the bone. And we're almost there. Uh, and things. Did you know that Laska has a Norwegian American connection? It was also on the Seaman's Mess menu on the Norwegian American Cruise Line for many years. So it's a very popular dish and things. So uh, it's also the Royal King's Guards, the Garda Laska. They make on open days and their days off. So they have a specific lofska that they make as well. So you'll find many versions of this. You can choose what you want. If you don't like rutabagas, that's fine. If you don't like parsnips or turnips, you can add turnips. You can do it. You could probably do like butternut squash or you could even do, uh, you know, acorn, yeah, no, maybe acorn squash would work. Any type of squash would work. Sweet potatoes would maybe work fine. So it's a variety of things. As you see, I'm just kind of cutting away at this and we'll get there. And I'm, I've got a bone here. I'm feeling for areas where I can cut away. And looks like I'm getting down there. I'm gonna stop here for the sake of time. Let's just do a little bit more here and then we'll get this here. I think this is good. If you know, if you want to take the time on your own to go a little bit more deeper and and cut a and dig, dig some more deep, I've got some of this here, which is silver skin. I don't know if you can see it. You'll find that sometimes when you're trimming whole tenderloins, uh, it's kind of a ligament. It will stick there, and it's very hard to chew and get through it. So um, take and bring that away, and don't use that part. So. We've got it, so I think we're doing pretty good here. I think, oh, I've got one more piece in here. I think I can grab, and that looks good. So we got quite a bit of beef here we can work with. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cube up this beef into cubes that are bite-sized, so that's enjoyable. And looks like we're getting there. And things. So, but you know, as I said, this was on the Norwegian American cruise line. I don't think they have it anymore, but back in the day, it was that. And then also, what's really kind of unique, I found out, is that in Brooklyn, New York, on 8th Avenue between 50th and 60th Street, I've never been to New York, but if you know where that location is, there was an American Norwegian community in that area at one time. And it was often referred to as Lofska Boulevard. So I believe if you go to 8th Avenue between 50th and 60th Street in New York and Brooklyn, you may actually see street signs that indicate that it's Lofska Boulevard. 
uh, and I hopefully maybe one day I will get to New York and check that out. So I'm cutting this up into cute pieces. We don't want something like this where somebody is chewing it. So take and break it down a little further and everything. So we're getting there and stuff. So a little bit about the vegetables. And what, you know, I mentioned before that we could use a variety of different vegetables. You could change it out. For potatoes, yellow, white rose or russet potatoes would probably be your best choice. Or today I'm using a yellow Yukon gold potato, which holds up well for short boiling. We want a starchy potato, a potato that you would use to mash potatoes with, uh, something that'll hold up to boiling and stuff. So with carrots, of course, that gives you a little bit of color. The stew doesn't have a lot of color as you know, a lot of Norwegian uh, main dishes tend to be white, white, white. Uh, unfortunately, the older dishes, the newer cuisine has a lot more. As I said, rutabagas or swede is a cross between the cabbage and the turnip. And it's a translation for Swedish trans translation for rutabaga means stumpy root. And Norwegian sometimes will refer to it as kolrot, kolrot because uh, kol meaning cabbage, so cabbage root uh, and things. Parsnips, inside the roots and have an indentation, they're a sweet uh, starchy vegetable. Parsley root is a slender like white carrot. You can add that too. I couldn't find parsley root this week in the store, so we're omitting that and we're going here. So I've got quite a lot of pork for the stew. This had a lot of fat on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that. I like a little leaner stew and not something that somebody has to chew on and spit out and things. So, and I said leeks, leeks are that onion that's a little nicer. So I'm almost here and things. So. If you do want to check out in any recipes that I've had out there or uh, any videos, check out the Sons of Norway District 5 web uh, Facebook page. Sometimes you'll find some things there. And also the District 5, Sons of Norway District 5 websites. I'll be posting some recipes out there for all different types of dishes. I've taught main dishes and salads and desserts and side dishes and even drink. So uh, we've got this going here. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for the moment. And let's see if I can kind of push this here. And what I want to do is drain off the excess that I have water that I did when I was cooking the pork. So I'm going to go ahead and drain it in a uh, two cup measuring cup I have here. You can do it in a bowl. I have extra here. I'm going to go ahead and toss that in the sink. I don't want all that. So this is a lot like using, uh, using uh, pasta water when we're making pasta. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this back in because this has all that nummy, yummy nutrients in it and things. And I'm going to go ahead and I have some beef broth or beef stock. And I want two cups of beef broth or stock. So I've got a two cup measuring here to make life easy. And I'm going to go just a little shy because as I said, I like to add in uh, kitchen bouquet, which is a browning agent. And I'm going to go ahead and put two tablespoons of kitchen bouquet. And I like to kind of mix it with the broth. So it kind of stir itself in. So I've got it and I stirred it here. Very good. I've got a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and hopefully I won't spill it out. And I'm going to drop that into my pot. So I've got my pot here 
I'm going to stir this around a little bit so it's good and mixed together. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and add is I'm going to add in my potatoes and I use roughly about four pounds of potatoes. I can slide this over a little bit. And see. So I've got the Yukon gold potatoes and I have them in bite size, a little bit bigger than bite sized pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and toss those vegetables in. And then I'm going to add in my leeks and parsnips. Just dump them all in. If you want to, you can use, put everything in one giant mixing bowl and then just pour everything in. I prepped things earlier today, so I just put it in contain smaller containers for ease in the refrigerator. Carrots and rutabaga. So you noticed it fills it all up here and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't fit that pork in there. We're indeed gonna fit the pork in there and it'll start to cook down. And once it cooks down, you'll have some extra room. Get this out of the way. So I put the vegetables in first because what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and stir this up a little bit. So kind of get these in here before I put the pork back in there. So I kind of get it covered. Alrighty, so we're getting in there. Looking very good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my pork now. Remember, it's not cooked all the way through. That's why it's got some peak in it and still kind of raw. I'm gonna go ahead and use my spoon here and kind of stir things up. This is a six quart Dutch oven. Uh, so if you have a smaller one, you could reduce size. Now, sometimes this is a quick, easy leftover. Some people even will use leftover pork roast and just toss the vegetables together, won't do the boiling part. But if you're making this from scratch, go ahead and do it with this method. So I've got it all in there. I've got my beef stock, a little bit of the reserved water that I use to boil, the pork roast, my root vegetables, the kitchen bouquet, and it's all set to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on my stock in my Dutch oven and transfer it to the stove. Oh my, that is so heavy. And um, I'm going to start it off just a little bit under a boil because I've got those vegetables that need to be cooked up. So what I do is I usually start it at a boil and boil it for about 10 to 12 minutes. And then I look to see how the potatoes and carrots are doing. Can I um, go ahead and put a fork? Are they fork tender? Can I put a fork through them? At that point, it should be somewhat close. They may be a little bit uh, still, a little bit raw. I would go ahead and reduce it to medium to medium high heat. If it looks like that there's not enough broth or water in it, you could add a little bit of water or a little bit more of bone broth or beef stock um, just to keep it moist. Remember, this is not a soup, but you want to have some moisture uh, left in it. So let me just get rid of the cutting board here. And some things here and we'll kind of do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my thing. So I've got it now sitting on this, the Luskov is on the stove and it is now cooking and boiling for about 10 to 12 minutes. Check and see how it's doing. If you need more liquid, add more liquid. If it doesn't, it's fine. Um, but then at that point, return it down to medium, medium high heat and cook it for about another 15 minutes or so until it, the root vegetables are pork tender and there is no pink left in the pork meat. So that is lofska. And I made a, a lofska batch earlier today. And I, pour, I got a set here to show you what it looks like when it's all done. 
It's a wonderful stew, has a little bit of broth and gravy at the bottom. And it has potatoes and carrots and uh, parsnips and rutabagas. And for me, it's just like people don't know what kind of potato it is, or if it's a carrot, they always try and guessing. So hopefully you and your family and friends will enjoy this. I'm gonna switch my camera back at this point. And let's go here. So thank you once again for joining me. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this demonstration. Uh, please check out other recipes in the Sons of Norway recipe box.